What, you won't keep me safe? I'll keep you safe, always. Hey everyone, welcome back to another review day. But today's review day is just a smidge different because today's review is going to be on a video game. More specifically, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna the Golden Country. Torna the Golden Country is a DLC expansion for the original Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But it's not just an expansion, it's the prequel story that lets you find out what happened in the, at, in the events 500 years prior to Xenoblade 2. Um, as far as uh, storyline and gameplay goes, this game is incredible. Um, they released this with the DLC, which you could get for $30. And you get a ton of stuff with the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. If you guys have played it, it came out last year, you would know that they've just been adding to this, adding and giving you stuff for this DLC nonstop. But this game in particular is coming out in a hard copy version for $40. So you can buy Xenoblade Chronicles 2 if you haven't already, pay the $30 expansion pass fee and get this, basically $10 off, which in my opinion is totally worth it because I blew well over 100 hours on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, this game, they advertised about a 40 hour uh, gameplay time, but it's not. I beat it in just under uh, 15, and I know that other people out there beat it in even less time than that. Uh, one of the highlights of this new expansion, or prequel if you will, is the new fighting mechanic. In Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you shared a blade with your blade. You shared your weapon with your blade while you fought. In this one, in Torn of the Golden Country, you uh, don't share, except for your main character. You guys share a weapon, but other than that, everybody else has their own weapon and their blade uses their weapon. And you kind of revolutionize this uh, style of fighting with your character. So the storyline picks up 500 years prior and uh, you kind of just want to know what happened. You want to know what happened to Torna. And they kind of deter from that. This is one of my only qualms with the game is you would think that you would be playing as the hero Adam and finding out what happened to his home country of Torna. When in fact you're actually playing as the hero Laura who is Jin's driver. And uh, Jin was the main one of the main antagonists in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I don't have any problems with this because at the time, it's, I mean, not at the time, but in general, it's a very interesting story. Um, for those of you who are trying to just like play it in chronological order by picking up the prequel first and going into Xenoblade Chronicles 2, things are going to be a little bit confusing because there are, there is stuff that they leave out from the storyline that people in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 already have learned. So they leave out some very specific cinematics uh, that, <clears throat> in my honest opinion, they should have just thrown back in there so that people could play this as a standalone game. Because as a standalone game, it's very solid. But if you don't have that previous knowledge with Xenoblade 2, you're going to be a little bit lost. And that's kind of unfortunate when it's something as an easy as a fix as just throwing in recycled footage, which I wouldn't even have been mad at. I played Xenoblade 2 over a year ago and a little refresher course wouldn't have been bad. Um, so that's, you know, one of my very few qualms with this game. Like I said, it clocks in just under 15 hours for me. Uh, one of the other, well, probably the last big qualm that I have is the community system for this game. Uh, you basically walk around and you talk to every single person in every single village. And all of these people at some point or another have a quest for you, a side quest for you, or a just talking instance that helps build your community. And the only reason I have a qualm about this is because every single time you talk to a person, it's at least 25 seconds of your life gone. And in Torna, or not in Torna, well in Torna, the main capital city, um, there's over 40 people here and that's a lot of time. It accumulates very fast with all the people that you have to talk to. Um, and the other part of the community system is you are required to get at least community level four before you can beat the game. So you basically just get brought to a halt. I was like, what is going on here? Like, why can't I continue the storyline? Because I missed the little cue down at the bottom that said, 
please advance to you know the next community level. So I was kind of lost for a second. I just started doing side quests until I upgraded my community and I was able to finish the game. So that slowed me down a little bit, but uh, the storyline is great. It lets you find out exactly what went happened before the Battle of the Aegis is, so you can find out why this country was in turmoil. You get to find out a lot about the Praetor. Um, before he was the Praetor, before he was Praetor of Malthus, he was Quaestor of Malthus, and it's the events just after he got back from climbing the World Tree. Um, you also get to find out more backstory about Blade Eaters and Flesh Eaters, which is really cool. You get to meet like the first uh, Flesh Eater. Uh, really cool. He's a, a cool blade. Um, but there's a, the combat system is what really stood out for me in this because not only do you get to fight with your character uh, with their own specific like weapon archetype and stuff like that, you get to fight with the blades as well and you get to switch out. And there's three characters in this and a lot of recycled blades that you've already seen. So some of the recycled blades include Jin, obviously, but you only got to play with Jin a little bit in Xenoblade 2. Um, Another one is uh, Bridget. You get Bridget back. You get uh, the other bodyguard that I never used. He's a, a sword tank user. I kind of stayed away from tanks for the most part. Um, but Mithra, obviously, is a recycled blade. You don't get to see Pyra at all until the very end of the game. And that's where the story kind of shifts. You go from playing as Laura with Jen this entire storyline, and at the very end, it abruptly shifts and kind of shows you Adam's storyline. So it's a little here or there. I was really satisfied with the game, don't get me wrong. It seems like I have a lot of negative things to say, but it's really me just nitpicking and things that I wish they would have done that would have made the story and the game better. Um, but I mean, they won't listen to me, but that's here nor there. So uh, overall, the game was really solid. If I had to give it out of a 10 score, it'd probably be an 8 out of a 10, especially for what it was being just an expansion prequel game. So if you guys played Xenoblade 2, do yourselves a favor, download this game, play it, like I said, 15 hours, super quick, and you'll enjoy it. So that's going to be it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And as always, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.